started with 100 points, then became 200 and more and more. No value at such that time, just for fun. And in 2018, I came to India, set up the India Blockchain Alliance. But the bottom line is, it is an acknowledgement by a government saying that, yes, this is there, it is cognizant, it is tangible, and we now tax it. Now that imagination has become a virtual world, which the technology can build. That's where blockchain scores big time or any other technology. And in, in tandem with other technologies, it is a, really a force to reckon with. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the crypto show at Coins Capture. Today, we have Raj Kapoor with us from blockchain in, uh, Indian Blockchain Alliance. Uh, welcome, Raj. Thank you, Malcolm. Lovely to be with you, finally. Finally, finally. So for those who don't know about Raj, so Raj is one of the person who, who, is, who is the mentor, who is an advisor, who is a meta influencer, and many, many other things too related to crypto and Web3 industry. So uh, Raj, uh, just to start with, so let's start with your journey, how you started and how you uh, started your crypto and Web3 journey? Well, it's actually a story uh, which I love to share with a lot of youngsters. But uh, yeah, I'll share. I mean, sometimes some of things uh, I should not share, but I'm still sharing today. With you, I'll share everything. Yeah, sure. well, it all started in, uh, in, the De in December. I was in the United States and uh, we were doing a lot of some projects with somebody. And, you know, in the evening, everybody used to go either to the pub or for drinks or somewhere. I don't drink at all. So one of the things which I did was I used to read a lot of books and do some work on the computer all the time. So one of my, one of the friends I had there who was working along with me, an associate, you can call him, or a colleague, he said, hey, Raj, let's take you to someplace new today. Let's go to a mine. So I said, which mine is there in Atlanta? I said, all right, I go to a mine. I said, is there are mines in Atlanta? Isn't there a lot of mines? Said, right, cool, okay. I went to the mine. It turned out to be a crypto mine. Now, I had no idea in 2010, what is a crypto mine? None of us knew. We were all, uh, who knew about crypto mine? We knew about technology and all, but mines, seriously? I thought I'm going to some underground place where, or, you know, but it was a huge warehouse, but there were hundreds of computers and a lot of people working, God knows doing what. And he put, he says, come see what I'm doing. And he says, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm mining Bitcoin. So what? What is Bitcoin? I had no idea. So he taught me. Long story short, he taught me what was Bitcoin, what is mining, what do you get out of it. That time it was not even a buck or a little more. I don't even remember the price now, so far back. But he taught me how to mine. And I said, all right, that's a great story. I love mining. I'm going to tell everybody in India I'm mining. So I told everybody in India I'm mining. And they said, what the hell are you mining? I said, Bitcoin anyway. And then being an Indian and being in cricket, I, I was a cricket player once upon a time. I played for Punjab, I played Raji Trophy. But coming back, I said, we saw a century. So I said, let's mine 100 points. Started with 100 points, then became 200 and more and more. No value at such that time, just for fun. Because in the evenings, nothing to do, all right, in cash. Then. And with like in a grand gesture, on the 19th of December, 2010, I put it in my cold wallet and gifted it to my daughter because it was her birthday. So she asked me whether I can buy a dress from it. I said, no, you can't buy a dress with it. So she says, what am I going to do with this? I said, I can't buy anything of it in India. So you do something with it in the US. She was in the US, she was starting there. So that's where my journey started. But then that took me into a, you know, a place where I said, oh, this has some real power. This technology is powerful. It's creating wealth. It's creating an economy around it. That was the interesting part. Not the Bitcoin at that time. I, I didn't know it'll ever touch 50,000 and 60,000. Well, my daughter did. She sold most of it. She sold about 50% of them at 50K and 60K. Oh. And she still holds the rest. So I said, oh, I said, I've made your life forever. Go take it. She said, I'm not giving you the drive back. I said, go take it. <laughs> it's okay. So that's where, then I got deep dive into the technology, which, which is it's powered on, basically. The blockchain was the bigger picture for me. I did a lot of work. And the Ethereum was coming up at the Foundation. I joined all the groups and the forums out there. I joined the Hyperledger Foundation also. Figured out how they are IBM and all the big boys are working in this space. Then around 17, MIT, 16, 17, MIT set up its sandbox in the US where we could work with people on different use cases of blockchain. And I said, this is a technology which is going to be really good for my country. 
And in 2018, I came to India, set up the India Blockchain Alliance. And that was my journey. So I always call my journey, which started with speculation that is the Bitcoin, but it turned into a revolution that is blockchain. So I call my journey, my journey from speculation to revolution. Great. great. So it started with mining. It came down to uh, technology. Now you, now you are one of the pioneers of the blockchain uh, Indian blockchain alliance, basically, and the blockchain. I, I, I probably think I'm the first to my mint a Bitcoin, Indian to mint a Bitcoin. I'm not sure, but nobody. Yeah, else yeah I, I, I suppose, I suppose you are one of the yeah. person. So, who is... so I'm happy with that. Apart from that, I'm also happy that we are impacting so many lives now by making blockchain relevant to our youngsters of our nation. That's for me is very important. Correct. So what do you think about the blockchain crypto ecosystem in India? How, how is it developing or like how, what progress we are doing? See, if you see, uh, the first impact was through cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin and Dogecoin and Shibuina and all that nonsense. Okay. I'm not saying cryptos are nonsense. I'm saying that the hype around it was nonsense. And people, a lot of people fell prey to that also. And a lot of people have lost money recently also. Right. We must take them as digital, virtual digital assets, as tokens, as what is required to power the blockchain, which is fine. But don't be greedy. So crypto brought blockchain into the limelight. I would call, I always call to the Amitabh Bachchan of the industry. Everybody knows Amitabh Bachchan. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might not. Raj Kumar Rao or uh, Ayushman Khurana, but you definitely know Amitabh Bachchan, right? I mean, now the other guys are very popular. I, I love those guys. Right? Yeah. Amitabh Bachchan may not give you a, a blockbuster film anymore, but everybody knows. It. Same thing, crypto brought the limelight onto blockchain, the technology. And you must have seen, Malcolm, the last two years, three years, there has been an upheaval completely. About Two and a half years, three years back, I used to work on 12 use cases in the blockchain space. Today, I'm working on 57 use cases. Ooh. So blockchain became, slowly, slowly, it became, this is the transformation phase of blockchain. It's transforming from just being, oh, nice to try, but to actually being implemented in many cases. Of course, we are still at the ground floor right now. We still have to go up the ladder right now, but we're still at the ground floor. But we are there. And blockchain has now become mainstream. If you talk, everybody talks about it, including our governments, including the Reserve Bank. They talk about it. Love it, hate it, but it's there. It's right in your face. And let's enjoy that space because it's not going anywhere. Now, now blockchain crypto has become a mainstream after, I think, the COVID and... Uh, uh, the COVID. Yeah. Yeah, acceleration started after COVID. And today, crypto is one part of what NFTs, they talk about the metaverse, they talk about DeFi, they talk about FinTech, they talk about Web3. All these have only come because there's a technology which is part of the decentralized ledger technologies, DLP, that's blockchain. All these would not have been there if we didn't have blockchain. True, true, true. So, but what, what do you think about the taxation in India, like the uh, crypto taxation in India? See, there are a lot of people have different views about it. My view is my own opinion, and I'm sharing that with you. See, in a way, we have legitimized trading and acknowledged that there is something called crypto or a virtual digital asset. That is the plus point. Let's take that first. Okay. I'm not saying it will not going to get banned. It can be banned anytime. That's a different issue. I'm talking about the taxation. Means is the first time it has been acknowledged as some sort of a commodity or an asset which can be taxed. Because if it was just air, thin air, because at, at the end of the day, it's code, nothing. How is the first time a code has become a commodity or an asset and can now become taxed? So this is a big plus to take it. 30% is high. Yes, it's very high. High only because it's not high otherwise, high because it cannot be offset against other losses. Right. Yeah. If you could, then it's okay. You can make your adjustments. But, and you can't carry forward your losses. All those things are there. All the little, little fine print, that's fine. But the bottom line is, it is an acknowledgement by a government saying that, yes, this is there. It is cognizant. It is tangible. And we now tax it. Can you tax air? No. But you can't, because it is nothing. It, but it gives us life. It's the most important thing. But we can tax it. What we can tax 
is something which has a value, a monetary value. And in this case, crypto is a monetary value. They've acknowledged that part. And at least uh, you also see in first, the, you know, the bill was to ban cryptocurrencies. Now it is to regulate cryptocurrencies. So that entire transition from banning to regulation is a great one. And the 30% tax is some sort of a validation that there is a lot of thought happening around this right now. So let's take it, let's take it positively. Yeah. yeah. Is it a little pinch of salt as you see now? Is it pinches us also a little bit? Let's take it positively for now. It's it's a good thing that it's been uh, regulated. Like they are planning for the regulations and absolutely. That's the, it's the harbinger. It's the harbinger of what's going to happen in the future. Right. It's it's better than than the ban which was going to be uh, in two thousand. Like when they otherwise had... we wouldn't be having this question. Our question would be, what do you think about the ban on cryptocurrencies? Correct. <laughs> right. Right. That could. Be. So uh, it's it's uh, from taxation now uh, implementation of blockchain. Uh, metaverse NFTs, which government is already doing. Recently, I think Fire has been doing a good thing. Polygon also is doing a good thing uh, when it comes to the government projects, the mainstream pro uh, use cases of uh, blockchain and crypto, basically. Absolutely. In fact, uh, right now, as we speak, uh, we are working with at least 12 state governments doing multiple POCs. Uh, whether it's land titling, e-governance, simple things like birth and death certificates on the blockchain, uh, education qu uh, uh, qualification credentials on the blockchain, the public distributor system on the blockchain, land titling on the blockchain, all these are very good use cases right now. In fact, the government has got about 90 odd projects on the blockchain. That's great, that's great. That's good to know because you see, if you've got 90 projects, you're not going to ban it. You're not going to ban the crypto card because it's the crypto or virtual digital assets or tokens which power these blockchains. So yeah. we are not going to be, so there's, therefore the regulation is taking time because there is a lot of thought to be put around. India is a big country, a lot of challenges. Yeah, there will be the challenges. Now the implementation is happening, 90 plus cases, 14 to 15 states or 16 states now having blockchain uh, projects uh, ongoing at different stages as pilots, POCs or implementation. Even states like West Bengal, which people once upon a thought is not is doing several projects. UP has got projects. Every Maharashtra has got a lot of projects right now. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there is a lot happening in Pune University. We are doing a lot of work in, in, in as a POC with them also. So I think this is the beginning of a very large revolution where people realize the value of blockchain as a technology, not just the crypto aspect. Crypto is one part of blockchain. It's not blockchain. Right. Crypto is like a car on the highway. The car is crypto and the highway is blockchain. It's riding on that. You will have a truck, cycle, motorbike, lorry, anything else also there. So I think now people have now realized crypto is one part of it. That's good for investment or speculation. But the real value and the real revolution, as we call it, is the blockchain. And the governments also have taken cognizance, and that's a great thing. That's good. As you said, as you said, crypto is just a part of the blockchain. It's a good use case, I can say. It's a good use case of blockchain. We can't deny that. But it is not blockchain. Right. It is a small little drop in the ocean compared to the huge benefits blockchain brings to us. Right. So what do what you think about uh, other than crypto, about metaverse or NFTs, like uh, opportunities in metaverse? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you something very interesting. I'm personally working on 11 metaverses across the globe, not just in India, across the globe. And that means what? There are use cases for them. The earliest adopter of the metaverse has, has, have been brands. So yeah. they have also used the NFT aspect of it into the metaverse. It's NFT is a great lead to the metaverse. The metaverse is nothing but a place where you, you and I express the way. We, we, it's, it's a virtual world for you and me, where we have an option to go to without moving from our houses. In simplest of words, okay? Forget all the technologies, forget everything. It's a virtual world. You go, just like in a, in a, when, you're, when you're young, when you read a storybook, you know, you go into that world, the fairy tales. Right. You go into Cinderella's palace, you go into, uh, you know, Red Riding Hood's house, you get into Jack and the Beanstalk. That's because that's your imagination going there, right? Now that imagination has become a virtual world, which the technology can build. That time and we were small, we couldn't build it. Now we built it, right? Now that we built it, you might as well go there. You can do what you like there. You can have concerts, you can do what you like. We've recently had concerts 
we've had recently, you'll be happy to know that in the one I'm doing, I'm working with one of the largest Indian trade bodies. They're going to have all their meetings in the metaverse, by the way, oh. right? Also, more than 107 brands are going to go onto the metaverse over the next six months. I'm working with them, right? Big brands. We just recently had with, with uh, it's, uh, Tanish has uh, the band. They had Riva, a new collection of theirs. They launched it in the metaverse. Now it's early days. People just don't know what else they can do in the metaverse. It's just the beginning. But we recently also are introducing concepts which other metaverses have never seen. And their best part is they've come from India. I'll give you an example. Uh, we recently did a prototype for in the in the United UAE done by us all Indians. All of us are Indians in that. All the youngsters who are, you know I'm grooming. So we created a, you know they wanted to have a, the world. They, they were having a world culinary fest out there where chefs from all over the world had come and they were displaying their. Uh, dishes, etc. And there was a competition. They were all Michelin chefs from all fine dining restaurants from globally. There were about 7,000 of them had converged there for that. Now, we used that and said, why don't you make the same dishes in the metaverse? We made the same dishes in the metaverse, but there was a small problem. You can see the dish, but you can't taste it, feel it, touch it. So they had made the NFT recipes of all of them so that the recipes would go to those people who would buy these NFTs and they would be one of a kind only. Now, we introduced a technology there where we could we bring brought in the sense of, we brought a wristband and it's got the tense, it's got a haptic technology. If now you could touch, taste and smell the food in the metaverse Ooh. and place your orders. Now that's innovation. Metaverse should be not just a place where you can just go and see something you should really feel their almost real life experience. So the metaverse is our self-expression and with new technologies, which we merge with it, it brings a more holistic experience. I think the metaverse has a major future and the NFTs can be used in the metaverse. Your gamif gamification is being used in the metaverse. So the metaverse is the big umbrella where all these things fit in beautifully. It's the umbrella body, the NFTs, the play to earn, and D5 fintech, everything comes inside beautifully, fits in beautifully. It's like different pieces of a puzzle fitting in to make the jigsaw complete. That's great. That's great. I think it will evolve in coming times. Oh, yes. We are on the ground floor of it right now. We've got 20 floors to go. It'll take another three, four years. And now with 5G coming in. That will play a uh, great yeah, role. Yeah, because you'll have a better user experience now. Right, right. And what, what do you think about the, as you said, all the developers who, all the, the team was Indian. So would India be one of the epicenter for uh, the metaverse or the blockchain technology? I say yes. I believe India has the talent. I also believe India has everything, the infrastructure, everything. What India does not have is qualities like working together sometimes. Everybody tries to work in different, different silos. As an organization, my job is to see that everybody gets a common platform. Everybody can actually learn from each other. Today, I, you know very well that I'm on so many different. Uh, why do I advise so many companies? I advise them to collaborate. I advise them to build the ecosystem which each of them can use. Okay. I do not have all the skills. I can take it from company B. B can take from A. B can take it from X. That's what we need. We need a collaborative environment and a mindset that we must work together, not separately. Blockchain talent is maximum in India. I think India can become the Nalanda of blockchain one day. Where people will come to learn blockchain to our nation. That's what I started IBA for. And I hope we continue that. And right now, uh, you'll be very happy to know we do a lot of education initiatives. I teach free of charge. I have 32,000 students on Telegram. Ooh. That's uh, my personal initiative of making this nation as powerful as I can. That's my individual effort. We've got a lot of people, a lot of people who have aligned with us who have similar mindsets to do this. So yeah, blockchain brings people together. So and think that way. Don't think separately. Yeah. And as we say, Web3, blockchain is all about collaboration. And I it's think doing a, you are doing a great job. Your firm is doing a great job when it comes to collaboration with different... 
so whenever we go or whenever we meet at event or something there's something as as a common thing where uh, your name or your firm name comes as like uh -huh. yeah, we are connected with them yes yeah, well, like, i think or, i think that is the that is the message that's the mission which i am on to make everybody feel connected why yeah. what is a blockchain a block is connected to the chain right and that's how it grows correct 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 that's how it is that's how we should grow i always call we should have blockchain without boundaries that's true that's, that's true. True. i suppose that should be important also what do you think in coming times will blockchain solve the uh, issues like corruption and things like duplications in the uh, uh to solve corruption it doesn't require blockchain it requires a human heart and mind <laughs> okay that's but what blockchain can do is bring about more transparency traceability and therefore accountability right. i think that's where blockchain scores big time or any other technology and in in tandem with other technologies it is a really a force to reckon with regarding corruption i can't stop that yeah blockchain definitely. can't stop it but you as i as individuals our hearts and the, our, if we spread the word properly it will be solved it also it eliminates the third party blockchain eliminates third parties yeah yeah in, in, in intermediaries which is a great way of actually eliminating things which are not required in the value chain value chain right we have a value chain some you don't some of the people you don't require how mm -hmm. and also one good thing is there even internationally people are now saying use blockchain otherwise we may not necessarily do business with you because they yeah. want the transparency right. so the question is not going to be any more like this is it in the database the question is going to be is it on the blockchain that's the difference that's, that's very important so uh, i think we we came down from your journey to india the metaverse it was great it was great to know about things i think we can't just complete in one session we'll have more sessions with you 100% wherever you are i'm always there you just have to book on my calendar and yeah. hope that i'm not traveling on that day that's all a uh, good thing i i like to tell everybody as, as in india who's listening in basically any students or youngsters blockchain is the future whichever way you look at it look at us i mean i'm 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 now almost 60 years old okay and i always tell i'm 25 to 35 years experience because blockchain keeps us young and yeah, i'm enjoying the journey i'm sure you will too thank you thank you thank you for your time raj uh, thank you for your thoughts you have been, you have been a great mentor advisor to all of us and uh, we'll surely connect with you for other sessions related to yes. metaverse we'll have a sessions about it also oh by the way i'm conducting a, a session of the metaverse inside a metaverse oh yes so very soon you'll see, you'll see my post. I, i'll post about it you can probably join there also yeah, i will surely join okay. all right and that's open for everybody who's listening in feel free getting you into the metaverse to learn the metaverse and web3 that is real walking the talk not just talking theory doing what you know best surely you you surely post it out we'll surely share it on our channel and youtube very soon next few days thank you